Holocaust survivor advocate do? Okay, so um, I was saying that I have 250 clients altogether. We have like 1,700 clients over here at We Are Rise. And coming in as a victim, we make sure that they are safe for beginners. Um, we do an initial intake. And that looks like, depending on like the victim situation, most, most of the time victims want um, basic needs met if they're like homeless. So we start off with shelter and make sure finances and everything are in place. And um, overall, <clears throat> we make sure they don't need anything. And we use all the resources we have around us. And I work with a lot of different sexual assault agencies, um, even DV, like my Pacifics are sexual assault and we have like crime victim advocates over here. We have mental health specialists over here. We have our ED, then we have granny. Um, we have a youth coordinator. We help with whole families. Every Thursday is our support group days and we have longer extended hours to like eight o'clock at night. I held a support group I do it every Thursday at six o'clock for healing holistically. And what that looks like is like a safe place for victims to come in and do healing activities. And it's open group right now, but when, once it's closed, we'll go more into the sexual assault if victims wanna heal from that. You know, cause everything is around trauma. So we try to like, I'm like, let it be open so all the women can come together um, as one to heal. But we do stuff like manifestation paintings and stuff like um, TED Talks, open discussion. We journal a lot. So our goal is to help heal. Um, yeah, um, we do, we basically like I get younger clients. My youngest is 13. So I deal with a lot of, you know, like she's, that's really young to have a lot of trauma. Like I have a 13 year old myself and I just be like, it's really hard. Like um, being in group homes, going to residential facility to facility, getting shipped out of state. Like it's, it's, it's a lot of work and it's hard to like keep up with sometimes when they are all over. Um, Clients come in here all the time and talk about a lot, like deeply. Some clients just really open, which is okay. Cause that's where I want to get them to let them know it's a safe place. Some clients talk to me about what's going on with them and don't even never ever mention it to anybody, you know? Like, so, but um right now I'm going, I'm doing four different vaccination clinics over here that like for survivors right now, I stand outside of them and let them get vaccinated if that's, that's an option for them. So just being there, like just being, letting them know that you not, um, they're not alone and you will walk the journey with them is very important. Some people have nobody. I have fam I have individuals that come in here with nobody, like absolutely nobody. So they come regularly, you know? And over here we have a six station job center we have a caring closet. We have free mental health services. We have like right now I'm actually doing a denim activity. So I can show you guys. I actually brought it out to show you guys. Let's see if I can. So right now we're doing stuff like this. To, you know, it's like an activity to heal, to even think about it, let it come across your mind and know that you have a safe place to even talk about it again. Mm -hmm. Like, so I have a lot of clients coming in here, like doing different, how they feel at that very moment about that specific thing. And I'm going to make it into a quilt and it'll be a masterpiece for sexual assault. So, um, yeah, it's a lot. And it's do you have any yes. questions? Free mental health services. Yes, we have free mental health <laughs> services. We have three therapists over here, doctors that um, African-American is our focus, but mm -hmm. yes, we have free mental health services. Um, mm -hmm. And we have men, men support groups as well, like an all men's group that's run by one of our crime victim advocates as well. 
<laughs> so like I said on Thursdays, that's like support group day. Um, we get caught up on a lot of our tracking and stuff. Um, we do a lot of work over here. We help resume build. We got a lady that comes in and helping victims or survivors to get what they need as far as like starting a business. Like a lot of, I noticed like a lot of, a lot of the healing is really giving survivors what they want and need because mm -hmm. that's the trap. They don't, they don't, um, they don't know. Like they don't know they have it in them. They don't know that it, sometimes they don't even know it exists. Like I hear a lot of, you know, and I just be like, I don't know. I get a lot of, I love you's and deep hugs. And I have a couch in here for that reason. It's a safe place <clears throat> to come talk to us. And then um, Randy and Dan and Robin, Robin is the executive director. She's also a therapist as well. So she take clients into, um, it's not a long, long waiting list. It is sometimes you might hear that we have a waiting list for mental health services, but yeah. Yeah, and I think that kind of segues really well into the next question, which is, what are some of the joys you've experienced working as a victim slash survivor advocate? You do a lot, We All Rise does a lot. And so I'm sure there's a lot of joy there as well. Yeah, I definitely enjoy it. I especially since I just started my support groups February 3rd was the first mm -hmm. day. Um, I look forward to my Thursdays first. My groups have been very successful already. Like we I always have a crowd. We always have a lot of questions. Everybody's always engaging and I'm trying to bring more of the youth in it, you know, because that's like catching them before well, I don't want them to break. You know what I mean? Like giving them all the support. And then a lot of people don't know that there are resources. That's another thing. Like everybody struggles and go through these things on top of being a victim. And it's, it's a lot harder when you just, I mean, people struggle all the time, but when you're a victim on top of that, it's gotta be really hard because you more than likely almost thinking about it and you're trying to get through life. Some people give up easy or on a, I have people that's on the verge of giving up that I have brought out of that. Like my goal is to catch them before they break or it's something about me. Like I always been doing this thing that I don't want people to have mental breakdowns as like a person. So I always caught like family members and friends. So I knew it was like something in me to help me help heal survivors. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, um, any more questions? I'm sorry. I'm just talking, telling you guys how I, what I do, how I do it. Um, I love having, the clients I do have and more to come. I wanna get it as high as I can as long as we have the database because at first I was doing everything by hand. And now yeah. we have so many clients, we starting to have a database. We, Osium is our database. So we'll be working with more and it won't be so overwhelming. It's not even like I want it to be overwhelming but I refuse to give up on them. So I was uh -huh. on the verge of doing anything I can to keep it going and never tell nobody I'm, I have too many people. Like, yeah, so, okay. What are some of the joys you have experienced working as a survivor? And then our next question is, um, what are some of the challenges you have experienced working as a victim slash survivor advocate? Um, I think you've already touched on it, just the amount of people that you work with, even though you have the drive to do so, sometimes the database isn't always there. Yes, and then like, the database is very important. It helps us keep everything in track as well. So I can't wait till it's officially here. Um, but that's a big challenge because like the burnout rate is really real. Like, mm -hmm. and I'm not the one that give up. And it's like, when I say that, it's like, they have to have a database, right? Like they have to have something to manage a, a lot of people. So, and we need the data and we need to show that it is work that's being done. So, and then we have the ribbon that you have on your background. We have mm -hmm. that painted on our, in the front of our building. 
oh, um, that's right amazing. now. Yes, it's beautiful. Um, yeah, and I think she said she brought the denim over here. Yes, yeah, so look, I told everybody to bring denim pieces in, right? And then all of a sudden I went to Atlanta and I end up staying for seven days and I come back with a bag of denim on my chair and they like, oh, we got this out of such and such office. And I just start using the pieces and they are so cool. They're amazing. They're beautiful. Yeah. So I just try to like, um, I'm here to help heal. I'm here to walk the journey with them. I have mm -hmm. high schoolers. I have younger than middle schoolers you know so I try to like let them know because sad to say like my youngest don't have anybody you know and that's just really sad because now she's so open that she she didn't want to talk like I don't know how you break that for a survivor but it's not easy you know mm -hmm. it's not easy she's coming around though she's coming around and she's talking more and she's happier that she ever been so it's just like I know I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing like it's my calling and I I really like it like I really like helping people and then people text me every Thursday morning because we start at 11 on Thursdays and they just like is group going on today so it's just exciting to know that they engage and they're you know it's part of their life now and I'm here mm -hmm. I think honestly, it's so inspiring to hear you speak about it because you can tell like it's coming from your soul and you are so passionate about this. And for anybody who is seeking more information about how to be an advocate, this is who you go to. This is somebody that is going to shine a light on all the beauties of it. And so then that also ties into my next question, just because you do a lot and you can tell that you do a lot and you're really busy. So what are activities that you utilize for self-care to prevent this vicarious trauma? I use candles. Oh yeah. Music. Mm -hmm. Journaling. We have like waist beads and like um, TED Talks. A lot of the activities we do in support group, just doodling with crayons and stuff, taking you back to if you're older, taking you back to elementary, taking you back to the good times. We do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, them the type of activities we do. And I um I try to encourage everybody to like know that if you wake up, if you wake up in a bad mood, do your best to make it into a good mood once you leave the door. And that's how you start your day. Like mm -hmm. waking up determines how you're gonna how your day is gonna become. So I help with women health, wellness and stuff, st stuff like that as well. I have people that drink lemon water on a daily because it's it's a big thing for like diabetics so I help in different areas like we do a lot yeah so and they send me their cup of lemon like I got it today so I'll have pictures and stuff posted on our website of like my support group things that I do as well soon but I'm just getting the kick of it because this is my second year in and um I'm doing a lot of outreach as well. I connect with a lot of different resources. Like I said, we got these clinics coming up. They did one while I was in Atlanta. Then we have a victim resource fair that will be held at St. Norbert's College, April 27th. Um, I think the time is one, if I'm not mistaken. I can send that information over as well. Um, it's the 27th and the 28th. That's when one, the second clinic will be held at We Are Rise for people that want to be vaccinated, no matter what vaccination you want. It could be the first, second booster. And then my granny, which is my real granny, she's the one that do the donation, the caring closet. Mm -hmm. And, you know, keep up with all the clothes. And plus she do all the cooking. We have a food truck that we do events. If we do events, fairground here at We Are Rise, it's right in our parking lot. And granny serve out of there for all the events she's serving food. Um, so food for the soul is very healing as well. And yes. granted, a lot of soul food cooking. So uh, we had over a hundred people here for our first vaccination clinic. So that was very successful. Um, 
yeah any more questions yeah so um first before I ask this last question, I just want to ask um, how we can follow you on your social medias, how we can follow your journey, support, donate, anything like that. Yeah, so you can go to our website, which is wearerise.org. Um, I don't have my own support group set up yet. Like, I'm just, it's fresh, but I'm going to see if I can get it approved to have a support group page specifically. So I can show, that's what I mean about showing what we, we're doing because right, it's more of a safe place. So a lot of stuff are, is not supposed to be exposed, right? But it won't be talking and it'll be more pictures. So I'll talk to Robin and see if that'll be something. And I'll update you on that, you know, to let you know that now I have a page you guys can follow. But if you want to donate, you also can go to We Are Rise and there's option buttons on there to say how much and, um, Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. You have our Facebook, our Instagram. Yeah. And I came in with no social media personal. So I don't even be on our Facebook page, our Instagram or none of that, but I see it. So when we pull it up here at work, I see it. Our Twitter, <laughs> Alicia is the goat. Um, I appreciate that. Um, yeah. Yeah. And just as an overall question um, for the audience, so how can individuals not in a formal advocate role support victims and survivors of sexual assault? That you said there is not in the role of advocate? Yeah, so people who are just kind of starting out fresh don't really know where to start. Yeah, I mean, send them, if you don't, if you want to support, send them to us. Mm -hmm. That's a start send them here to get the support they need. And we have people that come in with others that help walk the journey with them. Like if mm -hmm. you allow them in your safe place, we don't have a problem with that. We um, try to keep it as safe as possible. Um, yeah, like I, I work with the hospitals, the sexual assault officers. I work with a lot of people in this, the community. So. Well, this is... This isn't from the list, but I was just wondering how you heard about We All Rise in the first place. Uh, Robin, me and Robin have been knowing each other for like 18 years. We've been- Oh, wow. Yeah, so we've been friends for a long time and I came here to volunteer originally. Mm -hmm. And then um, I'm trying to think back. She was like, well, you're gonna be the sexual assault advocate. She was actually giving everybody there. She started with a group of people and then um, she was given like people that apply for the position, their job, and I was already a volunteer. So I had got the sexual assault. And look, I didn't know what to do in my role. I was naturally a healer. So mm -hmm. it just all came together. Like I'm just doing what I can to heal survivors. Mm -hmm. So, and everybody over here have a passion for it. So it's a number of people in this world that do it for real, you know, and I'm one of them. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Yeah, I think your take on um, kind of putting your spirituality with this healing is so beautiful. Like, I, I love manifesting. I love journaling. I love doing that. And to do it together is beautiful. Yeah, I have to show you guys this. So <laughs> okay. And if anybody does have questions, just feel free to put them in the chat. So this was our manifestation painting we did as a, in the support group. You know, oh my gosh. Did. I got the victim's pictures on my wall. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So when they come in, they, they see that it's deep. It's here. Oh, we also do vision boards. Ooh, I love vision boards. We do vision boards. Um, yeah, we do a lot. And I enjoy it. I like healing. I, lo I love the, the success that comes with it. It's so many people, survivors that starting new businesses. It's mm -hmm. so many that's happy to be out of homeless for 10 years, you know? It's so many survivors that... Mm -hmm that never thought to heal before. Like it's around, mm -hmm. but 
That's what I do, you guys. Yeah. Well, I don't know if we have any more questions, but I do just want to thank you. Um, thank you and thank everybody watching for tuning in today. Um, you are so inspiring. Um, and we do have another question. So Alicia Johnson, yeah. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to, so one of the reasons that, or one of the areas that we're focusing on during this Sexual Assault Awareness Month is highlighting the importance and the need for culturally specific services. So mm -hmm. services that are like run by the community for the community that they're serving. Um, mm -hmm. So I was wondering if you could speak to like what you think is so important about that or like why you think that's so important. And because um, I know like you all have um, great demand <laughs> for your services. And so I think, you know, that speaks to the desire or the need for it from the community. But yeah, if you could share your perspective on that. Um, I don't know. I feel like it's a need. Like, it's a need that was never brought up. Like, honestly, personally, from, like, I, there, I didn't even know these resources existed, you know? So the fact that it's, like, it's almost, like, booming. When I say booming, it's, like, it's out here, everybody's getting it, and they didn't know it exists either. So mm -hmm. I feel like we just like bringing a community in that never was there. Like we also, it's all broken up in different spots that we just trying to bring it all together. And like I said, our focus is African-American. We're not turning nobody around, not one person, you know? Like we give them all the resources they need and we try to do a lot of things, even in the community, like Juneteenth is coming up. It's going to be held at Joanne's. Everybody's going to be there. Like, it's going to be fun. Like, we did it last year, too. We actually, this is our third year doing it. Um, so, I don't know. I just feel like coming together as a community is real big. But so I don't think a lot of people knew that it's, it existed. I feel like it existed back when I was younger at one point. but then by the time I got into high school, it was already broken, like a curse almost. Like I'm from Milwaukee, you know? So I just remember like the block parties as a community and all of the good stuff that the barbecue and everything that was going on that stopped for at least 15 years. <laughs> like, yeah. So then it's like, it's almost like bringing it back and helping each other and like really be in it helping each other because we have people that come from all over and once they're here grounded they become community you know like you know it's just it comes with a lot of burdens too if people don't have the documentations they need for other resources it's a burden but my job is to like get that at least try so mm -hmm. yeah thank you for that that was a beautiful answer um is there anything else you'd like to share with us today you've given us so many wonderful like quotes I feel like I need to write down and um just so much inspiring advice so is there anything else you would like to leave us with today um I will say if you have anybody even if it's family friends that are scared and feel like they don't have a safe place to go send them to be our lives yeah. Send them to Ebony. I'm the only sexual assault advocate here. Um, I don't take nothing but sexual assault. I do engage with domestic violence and different, because there's not one client on my caseload that just marks sexual assault. They mark other victimizations. So it's not like I'm not going to talk to them. I do talk to other clients and help. So send them over here to get the support they need. Let them walk this good, healthy journey. It's all about healing, and they will always have somebody on the side of them helping them. Um, Alicia, you are the best. And I love you. Oh, that's my granny. But, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much um, for helped. joining us. Yeah, oh. she want to speak. Say, bend down on the camera again. Hello, dear. How are you doing today? So I'm saying it's Hi. Hi. <laughs> yeah. We're doing good. How are you? Very blessed, I won't complain. So, yeah.
Yep. Um, yeah, Alicia, I see that. I definitely, and I apologize everybody again for this okay. launch lunch that we had. And then I end up on my phone, try not to miss anything, but then I got to my desktop. So, Sorry. Um, yeah. Um, I'm just reading what, what Alicia's posting. It was great to be in the community with you. <laughs> yes, I cover receipts. You are the GOAT. I love it. Um, you posted all of our things. Like, you're the best. Um, so April 26th, you said learn about coaching civil services with victim advocates. Oh, cool. I'll copy and paste that. Okay. okay. Yeah, we will let you go. Thank you so much for joining us in and looking at all of our events too and everything. We appreciate you. Yeah, no problem. Go on our website and see what's coming up and let people even know like we have a job board on there. We have, you can sign and then let them know they don't have to come in. That's one important thing I need to let you know. We can do so much by phone. Mm -hmm. We can do a lot by phone. So if that's a, that's a burden, I like to take care of people how they want to be taken care of. So let them know that's not a problem. Yeah. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Have a good one. You too. Thank you so much. No problem.